Welcome to our stock market briefing show. Today, we delve into the exciting world of finance with three captivating stories. First, we explore how Japanese funds are poised to create a powerful virtuous cycle, bringing long-term gains and significant changes to Japan's asset management industry. Next, we shift our focus to Wall Street, where the US and its neighbors are speeding up trade settlements, aiming for a more efficient and reliable process, though not without some initial hiccups. Lastly, we turn our attention to Taiwan, where protests are intensifying as opposition lawmakers push for a contentious law that could dramatically alter the balance of power. Please stay tuned for detailed coverage. Reuters Breaking Views Pushy foreign investors have significantly boosted the short-term value of the Nikkei stock index, but according to Hiroyuki Otsuka, CEO of Newton Investment, the next wave of gains in Japan will come from local asset managers. In an exchange podcast, Otsuka, who has experience as an ex-Carlyle executive, elaborates on how these domestic managers will drive a powerful virtuous cycle of growth and dramatic change. This shift is expected to sustain the momentum in Japan's financial markets, creating a more stable and prosperous economic landscape. The Sydney Morning Herald, as Wall Street reopens post-Memorial Day, the trading process is set to undergo a significant change with the US, Canada, Mexico, and Argentina moving to AT plus one settlement period, reducing the time allowed to settle trades from two days to one. This shift aims to lower trading costs, reduce the capital required to support trades, and increase the efficiency and reliability of the settlement process. However, this change could also lead to mismatches with other markets operating on AT plus two schedule, potentially increasing the fail rate of trades and creating logistical challenges, especially for international investors. The move was partly driven by the issues faced by platforms like Robinhood during the GameStop trading frenzy, highlighting the need for quicker settlements to manage capital and risk more effectively. Yahoo US, in Taipei, protesters are gathering as opposition lawmakers attempt to push through controversial legislation that would expand their investigative powers and curb the authority of President Lai Ching Te. This move has sparked some of the largest protests since the 2014 Sunflower Student Movement, with concerns that the new powers could derail Lai's agenda lead to leaks of sensitive information, and punish those who refuse to answer questions. The opposition Kuomintang, KMT, and its allies argue that the reform reflects public opinion, but protesters are frustrated by the bypassing of normal legislative procedures. The movement, dubbed the Bluebird Action, has rapidly mobilized across multiple cities via social media, with President Lai urging rational discourse and a return to normal legislative operations. If the legislation passes, Lai's party plans to seek a constitutional review to challenge the procedural and substantive violations. Yahoo US reports that Argentine President Javier Milei has dismissed his cabinet chief, Nicolas Posse, amidst the stalling of a significant reform bill in Congress. This marks the highest level departure since Milei's inauguration on December 10. Posse has been replaced by Interior Minister Guillermo Francos, who has been active in negotiating the bill with congressional leaders. This cabinet reshuffle coincides with Miley's departure for the United States, where he is scheduled to meet with tech executives in San Francisco. The change in leadership reflects the challenges Miley faces in pushing through his legislative agenda. From Yahoo US, North Korea experienced a significant setback as a rocket carrying a spy satellite exploded shortly after liftoff. This failure is a blow to leader Kim Jong-un's ambitions to enhance his reconnaissance capabilities. Video footage from South Korea's military and Japanese broadcaster NHK showed the rocket disintegrating in a fireball, with debris falling into the sea off North Korea's west coast. The mishap was attributed to issues with a newly developed engine using liquid oxygen and petroleum. This was North Korea's fourth attempt to launch a spy satellite, with previous efforts also ending in failure. The incident occurred amidst international calls for Kim to halt his missile program, which is seen as a violation of UN Security Council resolutions. In a heartwarming story from Yahoo US, Addy Gawk of Greensburg, Indiana, has been awarded the 2024-25 Soy Scholarship by the American Soybean Association, ASA, and BASF. This $7,000 scholarship recognizes her academic excellence and leadership in agriculture. Gawk, who plans to study agriculture systems management at Purdue University, has demonstrated her commitment to the field through her involvement in 4-H and FFA, as well as running her own business, Addie's fresh pork and pasture-raised chicken, from a young age. Her achievements and aspirations reflect the importance of investing in future agricultural leaders. The scholarship underscores BASF's and ASA's dedication to supporting the next generation of farmers and advancing the agriculture industry. 
Yahoo US, Brian Preston, a certified financial planner and author of Millionaire Mission, a nine-step system to level up your finances and build wealth, shares his insights on wealth building, emphasizing that this is an incredibly optimistic time to start investing. Preston recounts how his high school economics teacher inspired him by suggesting that investing $100 a month could make anyone a millionaire by retirement. He believes that the democratization of investing and the expanding economy offer unprecedented opportunities for wealth creation. Preston introduces the concept of the financial mutant mindset, which involves being intentional with every dollar early in life to leverage the power of compounding growth. He stresses the importance of automatic investing to build good habits and ensure consistent saving. Preston also highlights the significance of understanding one's relationship with money and balancing financial goals with living a fulfilling life. He advocates for a baseline savings and investing rate of 20% to 25% of gross income and praises index funds for their efficiency and performance. Optimism, according to Preston, is crucial for navigating market volatility and staying committed to long-term financial goals. Bloomberg, as South Africa approaches its tightest election since the end of apartheid in 1994, the ruling African National Congress, ANC, faces unprecedented competition. At the Moses Mabita Stadium in Durban, President Cyril Ramaphosa dismissed claims that the ANC was losing its political dominance, yet the stadium has also been filled by rivals like the Nkata Freedom Party, IFP, and the Economic Freedom Fighters, EFF. Opinion polls suggest the ANC might lose its parliamentary majority and control of several provinces due to dissatisfaction with government services and high levels of poverty, unemployment, and crime. In KwaZulu-Natal, the ANC is challenged by the IFP and a new party led by former President Jacob Zuma, who remains popular among Zulu speakers. Gauteng, home to Johannesburg and Pretoria, is also critical, with the ANC's support slipping amid coalition struggles to deliver basic services. The Western Cape, dominated by the Democratic Alliance, DA, faces its own challenges with smaller parties gaining ground. The upcoming elections will be a pivotal moment for South Africa's political landscape. Associated Press, international donors have pledged $8.1 billion in grants and loans to support Syrians affected by war, poverty, and hunger, surpassing the United Nations appeal but reflecting donor fatigue amid global conflicts. This year's pledges are lower than last year's $10.3 billion, highlighting the strain on international aid resources. The funds are intended for Syrians both within the war-torn country and the 5.7 million refugees in neighboring countries like Turkey, Lebanon, and Jordan, which are also grappling with economic crises. The conference in Brussels emphasized the need for sustainable solutions, including early recovery efforts to rebuild infrastructure and create jobs in Syria, to facilitate the voluntary and safe return of refugees. Humanitarian officials stress that conditions in Syria remain dire, with millions living in poverty and struggling to access basic necessities. The urgency of revitalizing the UN-led peace process was also underscored, as host countries increasingly push for refugee returns despite ongoing instability in Syria. Yahoo US, in New Zealand, the once-promising strategy of planting millions of trees to combat climate change has proven more contentious and less effective than anticipated. The country's emissions trading scheme incentivized forestry development, leading to a significant expansion of Pinus radiata pine plantations. However, this rapid afforestation has sparked criticism from various sectors. Parliamentary Commissioner for the Environment Simon Upton argues that treating afforestation as a cheap way to offset fossil fuel emissions is misguided. The practice has also encroached on farmland, disrupting the meat and dairy industry and exacerbating damage from natural disasters like Cyclone Gabriel. Despite the increase in forest cover, experts contend that the strategy is not sustainable in the long run, as forests' carbon absorption efficiency declines over time. The government is now considering policy revisions to balance land use more effectively, although limiting forestry credits is not currently being discussed. The Sydney Morning Herald, exiled Chinese tycoon Guo Wangue, also known as Miles Guo and Ho Wan Kwok, is facing a billion-dollar fraud and racketeering trial in New York. Known for his lavish lifestyle and vocal criticism of the Chinese Communist Party, Guo is accused of defrauding investors out of over $1 billion through four fraudulent schemes. Prosecutors allege that Guo used the funds for personal luxuries, including a $26 million mansion and a $37 million yacht. Guo's defense argues that his wealth and extravagant spending predate the alleged crimes and that he has been targeted by the Chinese government, which has seized his assets and detained his family members. The trial has garnered significant attention, with the jury being kept anonymous due to concerns about Guo's supporters and the potential threats posed by the Chinese Communist Party.
Guo's association with former Trump adviser Steve Bannon and his high-profile arrest have added further intrigue to the case. Australian Broadcasting Corporation, Australia's largest superannuation funds have come under scrutiny for significantly increasing their investments in high-emitting companies, despite claims of supporting greater climate action. According to environmental finance group Market Forces, these funds have doubled their investments in climate wreckers to $39 billion over the past two years, while clean energy investments have decreased. Market Forces campaigner Brett Morgan emphasized the need for super funds to divest from fossil fuels and push for climate-friendly investments. The report highlighted that a substantial portion of these investments went to companies like Woodside, Santos, and Whitehaven, with Australian Super notably increasing its investment in Woodside shares. The rise in fossil fuel investments has raised concerns about greenwashing, prompting regulatory scrutiny. The Australian Securities and Investments Commission, ASIC, has already taken legal action against Mercer superannuation for misleading sustainability claims, reflecting a broader effort to ensure financial institutions' climate-related claims are accurate. The Sydney Morning Herald reports that European shares are experiencing a modest rise due to speculation that the European Central Bank, ECB, might implement consecutive rate cuts starting next month. This optimism is reflected in the futures market, with Nasdaq 100 futures climbing to a record high. The Stocks Europe 600 index saw gains led by carmakers and utilities, despite low trading volumes due to holidays in the UK and US. ECB officials are divided on the necessity of back-to-back -back rate cuts, with some advocating for a cautious approach due to uncertainties such as wage growth and geopolitical tensions in the Middle East. Meanwhile, the Australian share market is set to open higher, buoyed by these positive signals from Europe. Additionally, the MSCI Asia-Pacific Index posted significant gains, driven by strong performances in Hong Kong, China, and Japan. The week ahead promises a slew of inflation data from various regions, which will be crucial for traders adjusting their monetary policy expectations. Yahoo US highlights a treasure trove for bargain hunters on Amazon, where a secret coupon page offers substantial discounts on a wide range of products, from kitchen essentials to fashion items. Savvy shoppers can clip these coupons online, adding items to their cart and seeing the discounts applied at checkout. This page is continuously updated with new offers, making it a valuable resource for those looking to save money on everyday purchases. For example, the Casa Culina Round Pizza Pan Set is available for half its original price, and the Five Figs Quilted Tote Bag can be snagged at a 50% discount. Other notable deals include the Yespier Card Jump Starter, Babiner Hair Dryer, and BTC Link Smart LED Light Bulbs, all of which come with significant savings. This approach to online coupon clipping offers a modern twist on traditional couponing, allowing consumers to enjoy the convenience of online shopping while still benefiting from substantial discounts. Bloomberg reports escalating tensions in the Middle East following a deadly clash between Israeli troops and an Egyptian soldier at the Gaza border, coupled with an Israeli airstrike that killed at least 40 Palestinians in a camp for displaced people. The airstrike, which Israel described as targeting senior Hamas officials, has drawn widespread international condemnation. French President Emmanuel Macron and EU foreign policy chief Joseph Borrell expressed their outrage and horror, respectively. The White House acknowledged Israel's right to target Hamas but emphasized the need to protect civilians. The incidents have heightened concerns about the humanitarian impact of the ongoing conflict and the potential for further deterioration in Israeli-Egyptian relations. The Israel-Hamas war, which began on October 7, has already resulted in significant casualties on both sides, with thousands of Palestinians killed in Israeli counterattacks. The US and other nations are urging Israel to exercise restraint to avoid further civilian casualties and maintain regional stability. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.